Y1s and 2s. Oh, did I just get pooped on? What the heck? This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. What is going on, guys? So we have a no heat call here to run. Just got on the roof and D1 here is the one that wasn't at temperature. The other ones were. I can smell gas pretty strong since I walked up to it. So it's not firing off. Super. And it's a Linux. Let's see what we got going on here. We got a W1, W2 call there. We got a 59 code. Gas valve one, not energized, default. Energize three default times, two minutes after demand. Well, yeah, probably because it didn't light, you think? It does have occupied at least this time. The other one didn't have occupied. So, well, look at that. It's another one of those little blue modules there, which I found out that the bigger, uglier one is actually the newest version, so. See if this one's exactly the same as the last one. And then you figure out why I got really bored with the last place I worked at, because it usually ends up being the same thing over and over and over. And when that's pretty much the primary equipment you work on is one brand, uh, for the most part, it gets pretty boring. Let's see if we can reset this thing. Press and hold, should blank it out. Starts over, still got a call. Let's take a look at this belt. Pretty tight. Woo! Feeling warm. Holy dog biscuits. That is warm. Let's get the old spectacles out here because I can't read anything up close anymore. I heard a click, but not seeing anything coming across there. Up, 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 up. Woo! Smelly, smelly. All right, let's watch this happen again. So the spark module must be working, but we're only getting a little bit, probably a couple flames across. Definitely not getting down to the flame sensor. So let's watch this again. So we're probably getting it right down in here. Yeah, look at that. Look how this left chambers right there are pretty, pretty burnt. Now they even said themselves, they thought maybe it'd be the heat exchanger. Yep, see, we got three of them like heat exchanger. Yep, that's it. Well, in this case here, being the burners look like they got enough rust on the ends of them, chances are they are completely needing cleaned and probably have crap in the crossovers. Let's go ahead and shut this off. Hopefully this one actually has a breaker. We can do two things here. We can check the exchanger first, which would save us a lot of time. If it's garbage, we can like quit right away. There we go. Check the bearings on the blower. Don't feel any shaky shaky. Looks like that's actually fairly straight, which is kind of nice and surprising. We can probably see that best from that rear panel back there. Well, yeah, not horrible. We could probably look at the backside a little bit better. Yeah, that motor is a little warm. Depending on the voltage you're running, it should be somewhere between 6.2 and 6.2. That's weird, same thing both ways, full load amps. Let's go 6.2. Well, let's put this back together. We'll look at the back side. Let's see if we can get this thing cleaned up and running for now. I don't know why they didn't do this like they do the residential, but if they would have had a burner bracket across there, it would have been pretty easy. It would appear that they haven't been pulled out since the time they were installed. Yeah, it looks, oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, that's nice. Man, that bad boy is rusted. The Grimace would be happy. Well, here you go. Flame sensor don't look too bad. We'll just go up and down with it this time. I'm not gonna get too crazy and break the ceramic. Move on to the next, because some of these are pretty bad. The middle's not the, the big issue. It's these crossovers, which may have to run. Um, piece of sheet metal through there to clean that out. Yeah, this one's pretty bad too. This one might end up getting put on the other side, upside down if it needs to be. There's really no right side up, but I always kind of like to have this side like this. 
So we're gonna put the two crap ones at the very end and it's gonna be the crossover section on the right and the crossover section on the left. Putting this hunk of poop right down here in the spot. Putting this one with the crappy, out like that towards the left. You put one of the bad ones in the middle and it pretty much kills your chain going all the way down to the flame sensor. Okay, we got all the screws in there except for one on each side of that one. Let's see if it's Nancy Pansy Fancy little hunk junk. We'll run. Oh, that about sucks. Um, I wonder where our gas pressure is. There are my most popular apps I've got. Come on, you can do it. Man, I don't thread for crap. All right, let's turn this thing on. Let's reset it. There we go. Time I did it a little bit better, maybe. Oh, I got that flex connector crap right there coming up. This is an 06. Holy mackerel. Yep, 0.3. That was, that was pretty impressive. If it was a spider web or something like that, which it could be, but usually you get a little more pressure than that on the outgoing side. It's just that you wouldn't have it at the ends of the orifices. There it goes. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Come on, slowly, slowly. Yeah, it's not getting it. We're not even getting up to an inch. Let's see what our incoming pressure is. Let's go ahead and stop this thing. All right, we got five, five inches of water column coming in. That's an inch over the three and a half mark. I mean, it ain't great, but it would work. This is a two-stage valve. It makes me wonder, are we getting power on all terminals so that it's firing on high and then dropping to low? We can check out here. Obviously, the gas valve is not going to open because we don't have the plug in it. Somebody keeps asking how I'm hanging things on my meter. It's got a place on it. It's just part of it. Yeah, we got it on one. Nothing on two. I don't know what the normal order is on this. If it normally does two at the same time, and this thing's smart enough, if you jump them together, it's not going to work right. 27, jump over to this other one, nothing. So we only got it on W1. Now, you know these plugs can be garbage. This is gonna trip out the limit and give us a false reading if I can get this stupid thing unplugged. So when I did that, it's gonna pressure switches, all that crap, they're all gonna be. It may need a look too to see if it got anything in line with that W2 that's possibly breaking it. All right, there we go. Y1s and 2s. Oh, did I just get pooped on? What the hell? I think somebody's throwing something. Yeah, somebody threw something. What the hell? Yeah, somebody threw something. Or it could be one of the 5,000 birds that just went by. Now that we plugged that back in, let's see if we get 24 volts on both terminals. 27, going to the other one. Now we got 27 volts on high. Look at that crap. Look at that, and then the meter shuts off. All right, now let's go ahead and try putting it back together. Um, everything else in this whole thing is like horrible shape. That's kind of why I thought maybe that might be it. Here's high and low, there's gas valves. So you got high, you got low getting powered off the ignition module, it looks like. And then you've got high coming off the, looks like a plug. I mean, you got a plug here, you got a plug there. So we know we got 24 volts. The valve's not opening up. I have a bad feeling about the module, but man, we could order burners, gas valve, and spark ignition. This thing's a piece of eight. Yeah, you know what? They need a gas valve control module and whatever else. That's what we're getting them. And uh, we're gonna tell them what they need. We're gonna order a new gas valve, control module, 11 burners. And uh, if they got other issues after that, we'll deal with it then. Yes, he's back. All right. We've got goodies from Linux. Had to buy a next day air, otherwise he's gonna wait forever for it. We got flame sensor, igniter, burners, and ignition module. Figured why not? They asked if I needed them. Figured might as well get them. It's not gonna hurt the way everything else was in horrible shape. So let's get a couple things out of there that don't belong and uh, let's get up there on the roof. All right, let's go ahead and turn this off. See if we can get this thing 
it's swapped out with wholesome goodnesses. They got more money in the box and I think they burnt through the burner. That looks a little bit nicer than the last time, that's for certain. Gas valve. Looked like it was the same one to me, so we're good there. Ground yourself. Okay. We got that. As usual, what I usually do is I put it in the decision maker's ballpark and tell them, hey, here's my concerns. Here's what I think should be done. And then if they don't do it, I mark it on the paperwork. Hey, customer declined doing whatever it is I recommended. That way, if it goes out later, then they can't count it as a callback. They can't say that we missed anything. It's putting everything documented and you can't say that, you know, we didn't do them a good job. It just pretty much covers you for all that. You know what I just noticed? The award for the most pitiful install goes to this guy. Let's put the shutoff valve after the union. That's, that is super smart there. We're gonna do what we gotta do to get it changed. Uh, that's track pipe or whatever, Ward Flex, whatever flexible gizmo gadget crap they've got uh, at the time uh, going into the return-ish area down through into the building. And finding that shutoff is not going to be on my radar. I thought they were gonna give me a new cable for the igniters. Man, you can tell those were taken out on a routine basis. Look at that. Oh my goodnesses. We're gonna leave this old one. It's all nicely rusted. Usually not a big proponent of changing flame sensors for shadizzles, but we are going to do it just because of the poor quality of the connectors. Nope, that was just the stub from the other side. So we're gonna leave that right down there for later in case somebody else needs it. <laughs> there we go. There we clear it. There we goes. Unfortunately, it's gonna go halfway and then you're gonna have to come down a little bit. <sighs> go that way and take it back up again. What a pain in the neck. I mean, this is common sense stuff here. What we're gonna do, I don't know if I have enough black iron fittings to change it the way it should have been done to begin with. <sighs> That's three quarter. I don't carry a crap load of that. Hell, nobody even uses black iron anymore. They went into this crimp it on stuff because nobody knows how to use a threader. Okay, we got it out of there. So in theory, the only thing we're gonna need to redope is that. We'll use the pipe as our vice stand. We're on that mat, so we're not gonna put a hole in the roof. Okay, there we go. While we're at it, let's look for cobwebs. None there. Nothing white in the back of the orifices. That will happen sometimes. problem have we half tapped it long enough that we now may have to replace the uh holy holy dog crap man that's ridiculous yeah that belts that belt is destructive this one here's a little bit better but not much perfectly flat look at that pulley perfectly flat that's a 5 8 so they probably don't have that in stock at the local supply house all right, let's measure this stuff and see what we got. See if they got one. New to the iPhone world, so we got four inches there. Nice. Five eighths. Pulley. Yep, four inches. So that's four inches. We're good, so it's pretty damn accurate. All right, let's see if they've got a five eighths adjustable. Five eighths adjustable four inch pulley. 
four inch pulley that's 5 8 shaft. See if they've got one in a belt. And thanks to the infamous world of editing, boom, we've got our new pulley and our new belt. So let's pull this turkey off there. I do got my ultimate, do got my posi lock puller here, which I bought this for pulling hubs, which has the adapters. And this is the one they gave you. Now they make these in some really, really big ones and they are super stupid expensive. This kit here just for the hub puller was like 350 bucks, but it gets it clean off there. And after breaking some of the cheaper ones, I was willing to spend it. And unfortunately, True Tech Tools doesn't sell that. So they are one of the best pullers on the market and they're made in America. You'll see why here in a second. It's more of an issue with the bigger pulleys than these little burger ones. But you'll see here in a second how nice this thing is. So we just loosen that up a touch. This here comes around. Boom, back up the inside one. Okay, so there's the jaws. Now we spin this one. That one right there tightens the jaws up. And boom, there we go. And just like that, it's tight, ain't going nowhere. And when you've got a big pulley, uh, these little ones ain't, like I said, ain't a big deal. But you get a big pulley and it's a major pain. So, there we go. There we go. And this is why I like this. One, five, 20, 24. Everything tightened up. We said that the uh, 208 volt amperage is two, 6.2. It's 6.2 on both of them which is very unusual for whether it's 208, 230. Okay, zero it back out, because man, you go from that hot to cold, and this thing is always, don't matter if it's Testo or Field Peace or whatever, they all travel all over the place uh, with their readings when they go from hot to cold. Temperature, temperature compensated, no. Let it fire off with the door shut, that way it kind of gets the most accurate as far as disturbances. There it goes. There it fires. Good deal. Starting off at 1.7, 1.8. There we go. Sounds a little better, don't it? Remember what I said? 6.2. 6.7.7. Well, ain't that some bull crap? Well, no wonder why the poor little motor was getting a tiny ran off. 7.7, no wonder why it was so flipping hot. There we're shooting in at 3.9 inches of water column. That could be a problem, so we better drop that down just a little bit. 3.4, 3.3. Leave that there. So the high fire does fire. Let's see if we can get this fan blade or fan speed fixed here. If I'm going to shut a unit off mid-cycle like this and not do it from the thermostat, I always like shutting off the gas valve. That lets it start to cool down. That way when I just kill the fan, it's not gonna be as bad on it. Okay, just loosened that up, pull that out. Let's go one whole turn and see where that puts us at. Now I've got a RPM gauge and all that out there. and Yeah, let's see where that puts us at on this. Boom. Yeah, I have a feeling that somebody probably put the wrong size pulley on there too, or they got the wrong motor on there. This poor motor's lasted now for four years, probably overdrawn the whole time. And with as bad as that pulley was totally ate out, I mean, how bad that was. I mean, it, it, that pulley, there's how it should have been. So we got that adjusted already. We are running right at 3.48, and we need to check temperature rise, which we've got probes for that, which it's gonna be hard to do and get true accurate ratings here. There goes 6.7, 6.6, 6 .6, and it was rated for 6.2 and the other rating was 6.8. Either way, there's 6.5. Um, we're underneath that highest rating. I'm good. I don't want to go too slow. We're going to have problems. So we're going to go ahead and throw one thermometer inside the return. That should be fairly accurate here in a second. Which, you know, honestly, now that I think about it, this has got discharge and all that crap built into it. 
Let's flip that temp, push the third one up. Turn air is 73. Discharge air is 103. Manifold pressure could be as high as 3.7, 1.6, we use at 1.8. Fan don't change speed, so I don't really, I'm not gonna worry about the low pressure setting. 40 to 70 degree temperature rise. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna be a good guy here. We're gonna mark that stuff on the inside. 40 to 70 degree delta T and 1.6 and 3.5 inches water column. It's kind of the most important crap that you know you need to know and it usually gets destroyed along with model numbers and stuff like that but most companies are getting smart enough to put it on the inside. And we also had, now return air is 84, minus 84. We're at 40 degrees, 40 to 70. So we are good. We are good. Now, if this thing can't count on its own placement, even though I know it's probably getting radiant heat, not my problem. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this panel here. We'll see if we can get an actual measurement out of the discharge air. So we can stick that bad dog right there like that. I don't know if it's really gonna classify as return or radiant heat, because I don't know if it, yeah, it feels good over here, man. This feels beautiful. Okay, let's go back into our, our Delta T here. Right now we are running about 49, 50-ish. 137. That's what we got on that one, 137. 86 in return. And we got our gas pressure down here at 1.83. So did it drop down to low fire? Yep, it dropped down to low fire. We can bring some cold air into the building. That'll bring her back up to high fire. There you go. All right, she's looking good. No problems on the heat exchanger. That heat exchanger had to have been replaced not horribly long ago. If that thing did transfer over to the lower fire, then she jumped right down there at the very last minute. Well, we know when we checked it that we were good on that. So I'm going to just leave it alone. It was accurate to what I had there. I mean, it was right in there and they, we were in high fire when we did it. So I'm just gonna go off of what we had there and we confirmed it with the probes and then it dropped down to low and then it basically was backing itself out. It's almost, five, it is five o'clock. By the time I get home, it'll be a lot later than that. We are good. We did way more than most people have already done did. Uh, we know that it's set up correctly. Oh, there's gonna go again already. Well guys, that's gonna wrap this one up. I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. If you would hit a like, that's gonna wrap this one up. I hope you guys are ready for a whole new year. I'll just keep on going, right? Till next time, later. Okay, there's 1.6. We got low fire done since it kicked back out. So we're good on that. So we got right around 30, 31, 32-ish. Definitely under 40 for low. Then we go to high, we should be right in there at the under our 70 mark. Filters are fine, I checked those before I left. All right, got the soapy soap, big blue on there. No leaks, not even on the Union that I didn't take apart. Yeah, like I said, right there's a crappy freaking design they did. No leaks on that back here either. Got that sprayed, got all that back in there sprayed. All right, got the wire ties on there. Good to go.